Tyler? Make the ratio. Very good. That's our scale factor. So we're going to say K equals... How do I find my ratio, Tyler? Okay. Very good. We have to pick two corresponding sides and put them over each other in a ratio or a fraction. So what two corresponding sides would you like to use, Tyler? The PS side and the VW side. Very good. Why are those two sides, how do we know that they're corresponding, guys? How do we know that they're corresponding? Gabby? Very good, the congruence marks. It's between a 90 degree angle and the triple. Do you guys see that? The other one's between the 90 and the triple, so they must be proportional, okay? So whichever one you put in the numerator, make sure you label that figure your N. Whichever one you put in your denominator, make sure you label that one your D. So let's put an N on this one and a D on this one. Does it matter which one you label which? No, no but you have to be consistent, are we clear? So we're going to make the left one the numerator. So what is my fraction now? 4 over 8. Before we start to cross multiply with the proportion, what do I need to do to this? Simplify it. What does it simplify to? Not 2. 1 over 2. Guys, if you made the other shape your numerator, if you made the larger one your numerator, your scale factor would be 2. That's also correct. Okay, It's not like one is wrong and the other one's right. They're both correct. It depends on which one you made your numerator. But we do have to be consistent. So we have one half. Tyler, what do I do from here? You got the scale factor. What would you do with that now? You don't know? Anyone else? What do we do? Yeah, Chloe. Very good. I set 1 half equal to x over 6. Why x over 6, Chloe? Um, you have to find x and our x is corresponding to TW. Very good. Our s is corresponding to TW. Therefore, those should go in the fraction. Chloe, why is it x over 6 and not 6 over x? Be careful here, guys. You have to follow the N and the D, okay? Whichever one you made your numerator, be consistent. All right, what do I do from here now? Can I solve this? Gabby, how would you solve it? What do you get? Equals six. Solve it. X equals three. How'd we do? Yes. Huh? Of course. Of course. Yes, you will definitely see these problems again. Okay? Are there any questions on this? Are we Gucci? Okay, let's try to do the second one a little bit cleaner. Okay? What can I set up to solve the second one? What should I do? Find the ratio, okay? What's the ratio, Lauren? <laughs> so that'll be my K. That'll be my scale factor. Well, which one do you want to make your numerator? 12 and 8. Oh, yeah, we can use 12 and 8. Those are corresponding sides. Very good. Which one do you want to go, to go on top? 12. Okay, so let's make this whole shape my numerator, this whole shape my denominator. So we're going to put 12 over 8... All right, does that simplify? Yes. What are they both divisible by? Four, so divide them by four, what's my answer? Three over two. Okay, so my scale factor is three halves. So we're gonna write three over two and set it equal to x over 15, because those are co the corresponding sides there. You guys all on the same page as me? 
Yes. Seth, you're good? You have any questions? You sure? Okay, what would you do from here, Seth? Cross multiply. What do you get? 2x equals 45. Ryan, how would you solve this? Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals. Guys, feel free to just leave it as 45 over 2. Or you can, if you know that it's 22.5, you can put 22.5 or 22 and a half, whatever floats your boat. Either one of those will be fine. Any questions on this guy? Luke? We're just learning a very, very small theorem called the AA theorem, and it's useful to prove that triangles are similar. What do you think AA stands for? Angle, angle. Write that in there, okay? Angle, angle. Now, I always like to start this lesson by walking us through just a quick little example to see where this theorem comes from. So your next slide should just be two very similar triangles. What's different about them? Their size is different, right? So let's say I gave you two of the angles. Let's say I told you this angle up here was 55 degrees and this angle on the side was 75 degrees. And I said the same thing about this triangle over here. Now we've dealt with triangles long enough to where I could ask you, okay, how would you find the missing angle in each of the triangles? Yeah, Veronica? Very good, they should add up to 180. So we just do 180 minus both of those added together. What's 55 plus 75? It's 130, right? So if we subtract 130 from 180, what's the measure of the last angle? 50 degrees. So you guys are cool with figuring out that these last two angles are 50 degrees? Now, what the angle-angle theorem says is that if two of the angles between two triangles are congruent, do you guys agree that it was required that these last two angles had to be congruent? Therefore, no matter what, as long as you can match two angles between two triangles, they have to be similar. Do they have to be congruent, though? Are these two triangles congruent? Are they absolutely congruent? What does congruent mean? Same size and same shape. Are these the same size? No, but I know they're the same shape because what's all the same between them? The angles, okay? So part of our theorem in regards to similarity is that all of the angles are congruent. So if you know two angles between two triangles are congruent, you know that those two triangles are similar, okay? In formal terms, the AA similarity theorem says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the two angles are similar to one another, okay? So at a minimum, you just need two angles. Do you need to know anything about the sides, guys? No, absolutely nothing. But we're not proving that these triangles are congruent. What are we proving now? That they're similar. Okay, so that they follow a proportion. Okay, so at a minimum, we would be given two angles from each of the triangles, and they would have to be congruent. Then we can formulate this similarity statement down here. Guys, please, please, please be careful about this statement. Why is this statement at the bottom so important for us? It's an order. Very good. A is going to be the same value as what angle in the other triangle? D, D because they're what? Both same. They're in the same position. They're both the first letter. Do you guys see that? And we can match up C with what angle in the other triangle? F. Okay. Make sure when you're writing your own similarity statement, you match up all of the angles. Yeah, Christina. Okay, so the congruence theorem, this couldn't be a congruence theorem, right? Because we don't know any information about the sides. Do you remember when we had like side, angle, side, um, angle, side, angle, all of those were congruence theorems? Because those were showing us that the entire triangles were congruent to another if we were able to show congruence of side, an angle, and a side, an angle, a side, and an angle, right? 
This is different because we're only proving similarity. You'll know that the triangles are the same shape, but they're not necessarily the same size. Does that help a little bit? Okay. Guys, the proof for this theorem, you can literally just draw an arrow. It's on the previous slide. So what we did where we found that the missing angle in any triangle where you're given two of them, that is the proof for this theorem. That that missing angle had to be the same measure between the two triangles. Now, we've talked about similarity between all polygons. But this theorem only applies to one shape. What shape does this theorem apply to? Triangles, okay? This does not apply to quadrilaterals or any other shape, okay? Only to triangles. Gucci? All right. Let's do some examples. So we're going to tell whether the triangles are similar or not, okay? Take a look at the first one. The two triangles it's referring to, and I want you to outline them in different colors, is this red one at the top and this blue one at the bottom. So our goal now, okay, for all of these examples is to try to figure out if we can prove that there's two angles that are congruent in these two triangles. If there's two angles that are congruent between these two triangles. Does anyone think they notice at least one angle that's congruent? Javonsky? The angle at the top. Why would that angle be an angle of congruence? It's shared. Who said it's shared? Very good, Diego. It's shared between the two triangles. So put it's a shared angle. Do you guys see how both triangles have that exact same angle at the very top of it? Okay. Is there another pair of congruent angles between the two triangles? Why would those two have to be congruent? Because what? Uh, not necessarily. They do share the same side. But remember, guys, there's parallel marks here. They would be what? Uh, not necessarily the bases, because we don't know that this is isosceles. Blair? The two lines are congruent. What do you mean by that? Okay. They're not congruent. They are parallel. But how does that help me? How does that help me? Yeah, Jaden? That's what I wanted to hear. These two angles, if you think back to our parallel lines cut by a transversal, they're corresponding. Now remember, in order to use the AA similarity theorem, how many angles do I need to prove that are congruent? Two. Have I done that? Two. So we can put a check mark and say AA theorem applies. Wait, which one is two? Well, that angle at the top, do you agree that it's a shared angle, so it would be congruent to itself? And then these two angles over here. So Seth, if you wanted to, you could literally draw out both triangles again the smaller one and the larger one so they're not overlapping and you notice, okay, these two are the same and these two are the same. Do you see that? So I've proven that there's two sets of congruent angles, okay? Would you be able to say that these last two are also congruent? Sure, okay, also because they're corresponding. So you just have to figure out two angles that are congruent and then you can apply this theorem. Questions on that one? Yeah. But isn't the top one also congruent? No, the top one's not corresponding. The top one is just a shared angle. Because it's not, there's not a third parallel line. If there was a third parallel line here, then yeah, sure, you could say, okay, it's congruent over here as well, right? But only if there's that last parallel side, okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right, letter B. Can we apply the angle-angle congruence theorem here? Why? Very good. We have two sets of congruent angles. A, A theorem applies.
All right, what about C? Camilla? It doesn't apply? At first glance, I would agree with you. Because how many angles do we know are congruent? These two, right? One pair. But look a little bit closer. The line cutting down the middle. That is the first mistake, guys. Do we know for a fact that these two are 90? No. no. Can you assume it? No. So do not put those 90s there, okay? But think about the triangle as a whole. Ah, those two angles at the very corners must be congruent. Why? Why does this angle have to be the same measure as this one? It's an isosceles triangle, right? Because these two sides are congruent, so these become the base angles of an isosceles triangle. Now, Bella, I know those last two angles must also be congruent. Therefore, now they have to be 90. But you cannot go out on a limb and say that these two are 90, okay? I know it looks that way, okay? And it ended up being true, but you cannot do, make that assumption, all right? So this one would be AA similarity theorem. Applies. Do you have to put the word similarity? Um, I would say no, okay? Because okay? there is no AA congruence theorem, okay? Questions? All right. I didn't do D, right? Okay. All right, so guys, it, when, in these examples where they're overlapping, sometimes it's very helpful to just draw them in different colors or like just draw them next to each other. So I'm gonna outline these. This one I'll do in black. And then this one I'll do in red. So we were given that one of the angles between both the triangles is congruent. Do you, do you guys agree? Do you notice a second angle anywhere? Yeah, Luke. Um, well, we don't know the measure of any angle, like specifically, right? So we can't use the fact that it's 180. What do we know about that angle? Yep. It's a shared angle. So it has to be congruent between the two triangles. So whenever you have a shared angle, it has to be congruent to itself if it's shared between both triangles. Therefore, can we use AA theorem here? Yes. We sure can. Oops, wait, did I miss one? So, guys, let's do another example. We're gonna do a lot of examples, so we get this. Okay, so in this example, we are solving for x. Guys, if it helps you, outline both of the triangles. There's this small one on the top. Let's outline it in red. And then let's outline the one on the bottom in black. And we've got this triangle that's huge. Okay? And don't forget, guys, these two lines are parallel. So do we have enough to say that these two triangles are similar? Well, let's, what, what do we need at a minimum to say that two triangles are similar? Two angles, right? So let's try to find two angles. Do, do these two triangles have a shared angle? Yes. Yeah, at the very top. Do you guys agree that angle has to be congruent to itself? Okay. What else do we know? Yeah. Okay, so this one? It's corresponding. Very good. So those two angles must be congruent. So now we're like, okay, we are Gucci. We know that these two triangles are similar. Therefore, they should satisfy a proportion, right? So let's go ahead and find our scale factor. To find your scale factor, make sure that you label your triangles appropriately. So do you want the smaller one to be the numerator or the denominator? 
numerator. So put an n in there. That makes the larger one your denominator, correct? So we'll put a, a, a d outside the triangle to represent the larger triangle, okay? All right, what is a set of corresponding sides between the two triangles? Three over one is incorrect. It's three over four. Why is it three over four? Why is it three over four? So wait, you guys agree that the, the larger triangle, that side on the left side is not just three and not just one, it's three plus one, correct? What is three plus one? Four units. So if it helps guys, draw a little symbol that represents this entire side length is four. Now, let's do the same thing for this side over here. This entire side length is not x. What is it? It's 5 plus x. So we're going to take 3 over 4. It doesn't simplify. And we're going to set it equal to what? 5 over... Five over five plus x. This leads me back to that very first warm up we did before this chapter. Do we remember how to solve this? It's just a standard cross multiplication problem. Okay? What is five times four? It's 20. And what is three times five plus x? 15 plus three x. And then it becomes an algebra problem that we've seen before. Does anyone remember, remember how to solve something like this? What do I do? Veronica, go for it. Subtract 15. What do you get? 5 equals 3x. And then do what? Divide by 3. Are we cool leaving it as 5 thirds? Yeah, sure. That's it. We found the value of x. Yes. Yes, great question. Guys, someone else walk me through, why is it 5 over 5 plus x instead of 5 over x? Yep. Correct. So Camilla is absolutely right. She was saying that the reason it's 5 plus x is because, remember, your denominator triangle is the whole thing. Do you agree, Andrew? Yeah. And the entire length of that side is not 5, it's not x, it's 5 plus x. It's both of them added together. Does that make more sense? Yeah. We will do more of these, okay? Let's do another one. So this is the very, very similar problem, okay? So let's check it out. A, B, C is going to be similar... To what triangle? Make sure you match up the letters. Who wants to take a shot? Go ahead, Danny. Very good, E, B, D. Remember, why do the Bs match up? That's the shared angle. Do you see that? Excellent. Okay, Y is going to be equal to something, okay? How we figure out why is we need to first establish, okay, what is my scale factor? So look at this triangle, or these two triangles, and try to set up your scale factor. Let's make the smaller one our numerator again, and the larger triangle our denominator. What should my scale factor be? This is for letter D, B. Seven over three plus x. Not quite. Not seven over three. Well, we could make it seven. Well, no. Four over seven. Why is it four over seven? Pedro? Very good. Check this out. This BD is going to be proportional to BC. Do you guys agree? And remember, BD is four. So that's my smaller piece of the triangle. 
And then BC is gonna be seven because you have to add those two together. So we're gonna say, okay, four over seven must be equal to what? Make sure it includes y. y over eight. Because y is from the smaller triangle, which we made our numerator, and eight is that piece from the larger triangle, and those two sides, those two parallel sides, should be corresponding to one another. All right, how do I solve this? Tala, what do I do? Okay. How do I multiply? 7y, Seven y equals 32. Divide by 7. Y equals? Can I leave it like that? I can leave it like that. Why? Do 32 and 7 have a common factor? Nope. Okay, so we're done. Y is equal to 32 over 7. Okay, so now BE over BA should be equal to what? Let's try to find two more ratios that would be equivalent to that. BE over BA. Okay, three over three plus X. Um, we'll get there. I want to la label it as like uh, two letters. So like B, D over something else. B, D over C, D, correct. And what's the last one, guys? E, D over C, A. Okay. So remember guys, that scale factor, once you find it, you're gonna use it for all of your problems, right? Yeah, go ahead, Lauren. For which one? Oh, you're right, it should be CB, thank you. That second one should be CB. It's BD over CB, excuse me. Thank you for catching that, okay? All right, so what do I have to do to solve for X, guys? Use your scale factor again. My scale factor, I'm gonna get from the previous problem. It was four over seven, so use that again. We're gonna say four over seven, and we're gonna set it equal to what? Three over three plus X, very good. Cross multiply, three times seven gives me 21, and that's gonna be equal to, distribute the four, it's gonna be 12 plus four X. Subtract 12 from both sides, you're going to get nine equals four X, divide by four, X is equal to nine over four. Questions? Does it make sense? Um, yeah, Blair? Isn't C supposed to be E, D over C, A? No, that one's right. So remember, yes, because remember, this is E, D, right? And then this is CA. Wait, are you talking about letter C? Yeah, yeah no, that's the proportion because this is that last side from the smaller triangle over the larger triangle. Those are the corresponding sides. What else? Someone else had a hand up. I was going to ask if it's similar to that, like for BD over CD, would it be BD over BC? Because they're made against the first one. Yeah, that's fine. You could put. No, the order does not matter for those. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, guys? 
Okay. Example four. Given that AC is parallel to BD, prove that the two triangles are similar. In order to prove that they're similar, we need a minimum of two angles that are congruent. Any ideas? <clears throat> Chloe? Very good. Those two are congruent. Why? Excellent. They're vertical. They're vertical angles. Anything else that you guys notice? Should definitely use the fact that those two lines are parallel. Yeah. DBO? Yeah. Okay, you are correct. Those two have to be congruent. Does anyone know why? They're not corresponding anymore. They're alternate interior. Okay? They're alternate interior angles. And once we have proof that we have two sets of congruent angles, right? What theorem can I use to prove that these two triangles are similar? A, A theorem. All right, let's do our last problem and we're donezo. One triangle has angles 18 and 96 degrees and a second triangle has angles of 56 and 96 degrees. Are the triangles similar? Explain. Well, I always like to draw a picture. So let's draw a picture. It's gonna be close to 90. This one's 96 degrees. This one's 18 degrees. This other triangle that we have also has an angle close to 90. And then one of the angles is 56 degrees and the other one is 96 degrees. All right. We have one congruent angle. Do you guys agree? It's the 96. But we don't have a second one. But don't rule out the fact that you can't use AA. Let's try to figure out what that third angle is. Yeah. Very good. Add them together and subtract from 180. So 56 plus 96 is going to give me 12. I bring up the 1. 152. Subtract that from 180. Let's see what we get. So 180 minus 152 is what? 28 degrees. So are these two triangles similar to one another? And they're not. Why are they not similar? Correct. Only one angle is congruent between the two triangles, okay? So this one we could not, cannot prove similar. Hey, people.